Hello everyone, my name is Ankit Jain. I welcome to all to my channel Tech Journey with Ankit. In this video, we will be discussing the questions or interview preparation questions related to the agent force. Before we get started, in case you folks like to have one to one connect with me, you guys can log into the top mid by clicking on the link available on the video description and you will be navigated to this page where you will see that there are two options. One is to have the one to one connect where we can connect and discuss any queries that you have related to the sales force, related to the career or any kind of a support that you are looking for. Another option that we do have here is the digital product where I have published few of the digital products like the data cloud, LWC notes, uh, Salesforce admin guide as well as the interview prep guide. Whatever the questions that I will be covering today will be available in this interview prep guide. This interview prep guide have more than 350 plus questions on the different modules of the Salesforce, including the admin, LWC, integration, flows, and the scenario based questions as well. There are a few scenario based questions for which I have developed the code. So those detailed code and the detailed explanation for all the questions will be available in this guide. Do let me know if you find this guide particularly helpful in your interview preparation journey. So again, I'm iterating whatever the questions that I will be covering today will be available in this interview prep guide along with more than 350 plus questions. You can also check out my latest Udemy course, which is based on the more real time implementation of a car rental project where I am discussing how you can go and build a project from the scratch, considering your admin as well as the development skill. In this project, I will be covering most of the aspects of the admin and near about most of the aspects of the development as well, including all the complex framework that we typically use in the enterprise project to explore these projects as well. And please let me know your thought. Now coming back to the video. So let's go over the questions for the agent force. So very typical question because agent force is quite new and the evaluator might want to check your understanding about what is agent force. Have you heard about this agent force or not? So what is the one liner definition that you can suggest in case if the question has been asked to you, what is agent force? So in a layman language, it's a Salesforce agentic AI platform. There are a few keywords that I want you to be focused whenever you are answering this question. First of all, it's an AI platform, right? And this AI platform, it's available on the Salesforce. So it's a Salesforce agentic AI platform using which you can go and build the AI agent. Okay. So using this platform, you can go and build the AI agent that can ask your questions that can answer your question across the CRM as well as the connected systems as well. The advantage with the agent force over the another tools which are available in the market, it is grounded with your CRM data. So it will give you the answer based on whatever the data which is available in your CRM. Next question, which is a very generic question. What is generative AI, right? So generative AI is something which is a type of an artificial intelligence that uses the models, which is trained on the large data set. Okay. So there are two types of AI. One is the predictive AI and second is the generative AI. Here, the specifically the question has been asked on what is generative AI. So do remember that generative AI as something which uses the models, which are trained on the large data set to create the new content. So the, this is a very important point about the generative AI. Generative AI always create the new content. The new content can be of any type. It can be text, images, videos, audios, music, software code. It can be different types of content. And the way it does here is by, by whenever you pass any prompt in the natural language, you will get the new content with the help of the generative AI. As I said, there's another type of an AI, which is the predictive AI. So the question can also be asked on the predictive AI because this is something which is in the ecosystem from a very long time and Salesforce also use this predictive AI very heavily for their forecasting purpose. Now predictive AI is the branch of an AI. Again, what is the predictive AI does? It helps you to identify the patterns and the forecast future events or the behavior. So what we do in the case of predictive AI here is we use the machine learning, statistical techniques, historical data to identify the patterns as well as the forecast future event. It is quite different as compared to the generative AI. 
predictive AI is something which will analyze the past and the current data to make the data driven predictions. In case of generative AI, it was always generating the new content based on the large data model or the large data set it was trained on. But in the case of predictive AI, it will make the predictions based on whatever the past and the current data that it does have. Now, the next question that can be asked here is how does the Einstein trust layer help ensure the data privacy or the question can be asked something like this. Do you know anything about the Einstein trust layer, right? This is the core of your AI. So the expectation here is everyone who is using any kind of an agent or building any kind of an agent on the Salesforce platform, they must know what is Einstein trust layer. So in a very layman language, what is Einstein trust layer? It's a security framework. Right, it's an additional security framework which will embed it into the Salesforce generative AI solution. Whatever the AI solutions that the Salesforce is offering, right, every AI solution has to go through this security framework, which is nothing but the Einstein trust layer. Einstein trust layer it acts as an intermediary whenever you are initiating any prompt from the CRM. Here you can see you are initiating any prompt from the CRM and before you go and get any response from the model and coming the response back to the CRM. So Einstein trust layer is something which sits in between your CRM applications as well as the model to act as a security framework. Let's try to go big deep into it and I try to understand how the Einstein trust layer works. Let's take a scenario that from your CRM application you have initiated the prompt. Now this prompt that you have initiated it goes under the secure data retrieval. That means it will check whatever the access or whatever the data that you are asking whether you do have the appropriate access or not. For example, you have initiated the prompt to give you the order details of OR001. Now it will check whether do you have the appropriate access for the order entity and the record that you are looking for. Now the next thing it will do here is it will go and do the dynamic grounding here. As I said in the case the way Salesforce AI is different than the other AIs is here we can have the grounding done based on the CRM data. So here it will go and do the dynamic grounding and after that it will go and mask the sensitive data and at the last stage it will add the defense for your prompt and then it will go to the model. It will go to the models. There are three types of models which can be available. First one here is the hosted model in the Salesforce trust boundary. Second one here is if you want to bring your own model that also you can do. Moreover, you can also use the external models like the Gemini or the chat GPT, right? But the policies that Salesforce have with all those models here is and this is very important. That is the zero retention policy. Whatever the prompt that is going to the model Salesforce have signed the agreement that they will not go and use this prompt for your LLM purpose. They will not go and store any details in their LLM. And then once you got the response from the LLM, then the Einstein trust layer will do the toxicity detection in your response. Whatever the data that has been masked, it will go and demask that data, right? In case the feedback framework has been enabled, it will capture the feedback as well as the audit trail. And then finally the data has been produced or the response will come to your CRM application. As I said, this is very important. You should thoroughly know how the Einstein trust layer works. In my response or in my answer to this question, I also tried to put few of the scenarios as well. For example, with the help of prompt builder tool, you have created this kind of a prompt template where you are grounding the data with the CRM. Okay, here for the grounding purpose, I am using the fields for my grounding. Now, this is the prompt template that you want to send. Now, whenever you are sending, as I said, the next thing that will happen here is the dynamic grounding. So, what the system will do. Whatever the fields that you have specified in the prompt template, it will go and ground that data. Once the grounding has been done for the prompt that you have sent in the next step here is it will go and mask all the sensitive information that you will be sending to the prompt. You can see your credit card, company name, company information, address, everything has been masked here. And then it will go and add the final level of defense to your prompt. Once the defense has been added, then the request will go to the LLM and LLM will generate the response. Now here the reply has been started by the LLM. Do remember that at the LLM we do have the zero data retention policy. Now based on that policies and we get the response from the LLM, 
but in the LLM, all the data or all the response that we do have, it is available in the mask form. The reason being when we have sent the request to the LLM, we have sent the mask request. Now, as soon as you got the response, the additional checks that the Einstein trust layer will do, it will go and do the toxicity check right it will go and then do the data demasking whatever the response that has been received it will go and demask that information and finally it will be presented to the end user this is typical end-to-end -end journey from the time you initiate the prompt from your crm application till the time you are getting the response from the large language model and here the einstein trust layer plays very important role at the different stages Moving to the next question, which is again a very basic question. What is prompt builder? In a very layman language, prompt builder is a tool with the help of which you can create, customize, test, as well as the manage AI prompt template. If you want to create the reusable prompts, then the prompt builder is the tool where you cannot only create, customize, test, as well as manage. You can go and test your prompts against the different models and check what kind of model is best suited for the response that you are getting next one here is again i further try to deep dive so that i can also give you a walkthrough how this prompt builder will look like so this is the new ui that salesforce have introduced from the prompt builder right where you do have the option to go and configure the inputs right what kind of response that you want and in what language you want the response should be coming up all those details will be available here and you can see the further deep dive here is input model response everything can be configured here you can go and put the prompt and your prompt here is in the prompt you have used the merge field now whenever you are sending the prompt right here you can see salesforce have automatically masked the information along with the dynamic grounding and finally this is the response that you do have from your prompt builder this is the one tool where you can go and put your prompt template you can see how the prompt template is working against the different model and validate your response as well very useful tool in your uh, whenever we are working on the prompt templates now another very famous question and very common question because this is one of the most frequently used prompt template that is the what is flexed prompt template Right. So what is flex prompt template in a very layman language? It's a highly versatile template, which is designed to handle all the complex AI content generation scenarios. Whenever you have to go and build any complex prompt template, then flex prompt template is something which is very helpful. Unlike the other templates with the fixed input points, right? Flex template allow the user to define up to five dynamic resources, right? Because in other templates that you do have, Take the example of the field generation or the sales email or the record summary you can only have the fixed input points but in the case of flex it's completely dynamic you can specify the five dynamic resources the dynamic resources can be the free text or that dynamic resources can be the object as well here i try to put one use case because there is a possibility that the interviewer might ask you any use case where you have used the floss flex prompt template you can always pitch this use case that our support team needs to update the summary of most recently closed deal on each customer record so what you have done in that scenario here is you go and pull the information from the different entities like the opportunities cases and the product data because this is a typical use case of the flex prompt template where you will be pulling up the data into your prompt from the multiple entities Next one here is what is actually the grounding and why it is crucial for the trust. One of the frequently asked question, what is grounding? Every time we say that we have to go and ground the data, but what is actually the grounding? So grounding is something which will connect a generative AI model with the concrete data, right? Grounding is the technique using which you are connecting your AI models with the concrete data from your Salesforce environment. That is nothing but a grounding. If you are connecting it, right, your AI models with the Salesforce environment, it is a grounding. Without grounding, AI don't have any information about the contextual data and there's a high possibility of hallucination as well. Giving you entirely inc inc uh, incorrect information if you are not grounding your AI prompt or if you are not grounding your prompt with the more contextual data. Now to avoid this, organization uses a process called grounding so that it can infuse the LLM prompts with the internal data including the 
structured data or the unstructured data you can go and do the grounding in both the ways it is not like the grounding is only limited to the structured data you can also perform the grounding with the unstructured data as well so coming back to the agent agent can go and access the data via the different platform functionality right from your agent if you have to go and ground your prompt or ground your request with the salesforce data sources that can either be the data cloud or the salesforce data or any external data sources these are the platform functionalities that you can use like the flow apex prompt template or the mulesoft api now the next question what is atlas reasoning engine because the interviewer wants to know whether do you have the understanding of the frequently used terms with respect to the agent force so what is agent what is atlas reasoning engine in a layman language it's a reasoning engine or the learning behind the agent force it is the it is something using which agent force thinks learns and then perform the action many people do call this is the brain of the agent force as well right the good part about the atlas reasoning engine here is it do respect the sharing model as you are defining in the application layer so the way atlas reasoning engine works as soon as the atlas reasoning engine received any prompt right uh, it will go and make a plan based on what role it is trying to do right and then it will evaluate the plan and then redefine the plan again before taking the action so let's take the example from this the agent has been invoked right now there are multiple topics against the agent now the atlas reasoning engine is the one who will define to how to classify the topic right based on what is the scope instructions that you have defined on that topic then once the topic has been selected then there are multiple actions against that topic now which actions to execute again it will be defined based on the instructions so atlas reasoning engine in the one atlas reasoning engine is the one which go over the in instructions try to understand the instruction and try to relate with the prompt that user have invoked and based on that it will select what action needs to be executed right now in case atlas reasoning engine is not clear what action needs to be executed atlas reasoning engine and go back to the user ask the more clever questions and based on that it will take the decision what action needs to be executed everything has been driven in the agent force based on the atlas reasoning engine that's why it is referred as the mind of agent force now it's your turn what i want you to let me know in the comment section what are the different types of prompt template if you don't know the answer i will suggest do a quick google figure it out and then let me know in the comment section what are the different types of prompt templates which are available let me know i will definitely revert you back based on your answer for this video i do have only this question but i will keep coming up with the more questions based on the agent force so that you can also prepare on the agent force questionnaire if you are going for the interview as i said all the questions that i have discussed will be available with this interview prep guide along with more than 350 plus theory based as well as the scenario based question for this video thank you have a good time